I call the Prime Minister. I will not be lectured about sexism and misogyny by this man. I will not. It was just an electric feeling. I felt like I was there while history was being made. I knew that the speech is one that would survive the test of time. If he wants to know what misogyny looks like in modern he Australia, needs, he, needs he doesn't need a motion in the House of Representatives. He needs, he needs a mirror. When I first heard it, I really felt, thank God she's finally said something, because there had been a drumbeat. There had been this building of pressure for so long and no one was calling it out. What if men are by physiology or temperament more adapted to exercise authority or to issue command? I had just got elected myself as an independent to local government and it was the first time ever. And I remember watching the news and seeing Julia in that blue jacket and pointing across <laughs> the, the, the floor to the opposition leader. And I just thought, wow, I thought it was amazing. I was in year 11, just came out of my physics class and I remember a friend um, who had her phone on her during school hours, which she wasn't allowed to, um, came up to me and said, there's this incredible misogyny speech that's gone viral as they do the ironing. Thank you for that painting of women's roles in modern Australia. This speech was part of a very political issue on a very political day. I was offended too by the sexism, by the misogyny of the Leader of the Opposition, Cat calling across this table at me as I sit here as Prime Minister. If the Prime Minister wants to, politically speaking, make an honest woman of herself, something that would never have been said to any man sitting in in this chair. I was offended when the Leader of the Opposition went outside in the front of Parliament and stood next to a sign that said, Ditch the Witch. I was offended when the Leader of the Opposition stood next to a sign that described me as a man's bitch. I was offended by those things. Misogyny, sexism, every day from this Leader of the Opposition. Every day, in every way. The government had been under attack. Tony Abbott was a very aggressive leader of the opposition and had been very strongly attacking the Prime Minister and the government. And the, the feel in the chamber was um, from a government that was, um, you know, a bit on the back foot. Julia got up, delivered this speech and it completely changed the way the parliament felt. It, it really felt like her justifiable anger at the a shocking misogyny she had experienced. The focus of the day politically was on the speaker at that point, Peter Slipper. Some text messages had emerged that were, well, crude to say the least. Tony Abbott, who was very expert in that parliament at queuing up a sense of crisis or a sense of the government being unable to govern, being on a razor's edge, had built up this sort of sense of drama throughout the, throughout the day. Every day the Prime Minister stands in this parliament to defend this speaker will be another day of shame for this parliament, another day of shame for a government which should already have died of shame. Their approach from our perspective as the opposition was they were hanging on to this tainted speakership and that in itself was an example of bad language, sexist language, poor behaviour and so on. So while the speech itself has been lifted above and beyond the circumstances in which it was delivered, I still recall those circumstances in very great detail. Yeah. There was a particular context of which Julia Gillard's speech was given, but I'd argue there was more than one. There had been this drumbeat of uh, sexist abuse and a deliberate trying to tear down of our first female Prime Minister. We are entitled to a better standard than this. Yeah. She's using the charge of sexism and misogyny as a weapon against her critics. If the Prime Minister and her outraged female ministers can't take it, well, they can just get out of the kitchen. It's time that everyone in the parliament moved on uh, from this gender card. I think one of the reasons that so many journalists missed it at the time is because they sort of bought that notion 
Um, like the Liberals were saying, stop playing the gender card. They, they called those of us who were defending Julia and calling out the sexism, they were calling us the handbag hit squad. What was happening on that day was not unimportant to the fate of the government. It was not unimportant. But the commentary was refracted through that lens. Julia Gillard's on the ropes, Julia Gillard's in the fight of her life. So as a group, I think we, we to, a, to a man and a woman, we miss the cultural significance of the moment. I will not be lectured about sexism and misogyny by this man. I will not. And the government will not be lectured about sexism and misogyny by this man. Not now, not ever. I think it continues to resonate because every woman I know has had that feeling of like, I've had a gutful, enough now already. I think that's why it will always resonate. And I think that's why it resonated internationally as well. I think women everywhere have had that feeling. I'm so pleased that so many uh, younger people are uh, discovering or rediscovering the speech. I'm so impressed by this generation of young feminists. I felt it was good, but I also felt concerned because there was only her doing it. And I don't know if it will, you know, it, it's for a woman like myself, it was quite, I'm thinking, oh, can, can I do that? You know, can I ever do what she just did? With the misogyny speech, I wouldn't say that things changed overnight, but it was planting the seed. Um, and I think over the years, we, we saw female empowerment on the rise. And I remember going to my first ever Young Labor meeting, and it was just a massive room filled with mostly men. If it has given young women, in fact any woman, courage and heart to fight back where they see the circumstances of their own life or their own workplace uh, not ideal, then I think that's a good thing. As indeed I've always said about Julia Gillard as Prime Minister, I was proud of her as the first female Prime Minister. If there was sustained criticism of that nature that was not related to reasonable policy discussion or political judgment was just basically sexism or misogyny, I think there would be more consequences now. Our next female Prime Minister will be treated differently. There will still be the challenges because this is very much still a bloke's world. It's a boys club. We are slowly breaking that down and we're exposing it and the sunshine helps uh, to deal with all of this. It's the best disinfectant. All of us as, as women in this place have to learn how to um, uh, manoeuvre our way through. Um, but I think Julia Gillard has given a huge uh, service and we owe her all a huge debt. And the next female Prime Minister owes her a huge debt from whatever side of politics, because um, the first time was always going to be the toughest. Thank you.